name is Abigail Gardner and I had the privilege of running the Born Free Centres at Shamari Game Reserve. Um, this was an amazing relationship between Adrian um, Gardner, who you've heard about at the beginning of these, the series, and the legendary actress um, Virginia and the foundation Born Free. We were really privileged because we had um, 25 leopards and lions that we had rescued from all over the world. Um, and we got to have the best part of it where we got to look after these animals after they'd been rescued from these awful situations along with myself and the animal care manager Glenn and our education manager at the time, Christine and Sydney and Martin. And we got to care for these animals and make sure that they got fed properly because a lot of them had come from tiny little cages, um, part of traveling circuses or had been stuck in zoos where they hadn't been fed proper diets. And, and we got to see the best part of it. We got to see them coming back into the African bush. Some of them had never felt grass under their um, feet or seen the, the sky above them. A lot of people questioned why we spent so much money on rescuing these animals. And not only did it improve the life of that one animal, but those animals became ambassador species. Um, we brought a lot of school kids through the centers, up to 25 a day. And we would take them around the centre and say, well, this is what happens if animals are kept in captivity, are not fed the right diets, are not given the right space. And that animals should be free. They should be out in the wilderness and enjoying what they um, deservedly should have is freedom. I think all of us can relate to that now, being stuck in lockdown. Um, having your freedom taken away is never a great feeling. Um, and it was always so lovely to set these animals free and to see how these animals would change the perspective of these children, especially the underprivileged kids. They lived alongside um, the beautiful Shamari Game Reserve, but they never got to experience what um, the guests got to experience. They were asked to live alongside these animals, but never got to see them. So we, after showing them the centers, we would then put them on a big game viewer and take them out onto the game reserve and show them the lions and show them the elephants and show them dung beetles and teach them about ecosystems and why nature is so important and especially in Africa our wildlife is one of our biggest assets and if we don't look after it and we don't protect it no one's going to come to East Africa to see the beautiful animals we have there. So it was such a rewarding work that we did. It was always a bit stressful when the lions and or the leopards arrived. I remember my first or one of the second days running the centre we were um, relocating two leopards from the Monaco Zoo and um, Virginia and Bill Travis at the time had campaigned against the zoo and when Prince Albert came into reign he had given the leopards to Born Free and said here you go you can, you can send them back to Africa and it was so lovely and these two beautiful leopards arrived, Pitta and Sirius but um, I don't think people understand the hard work that goes into relocating cats and the amount of permits you need obviously you need veterinary permits you need um, important export permits, the animals have to have numerous amounts of health checks and it's quite an ordeal. These leopards had to be flown to the UK from Monaco, then from Heathrow down to um, Johannesburg, then from Johannesburg down to Port Elizabeth and it was quite a, a trek for them but once they got there, I never forget, um, Pitta was uh, not happy that she had been in her crate for a couple of days so when she came out, she came out like a rocket and saw a journalist and decided that um, she was having none of this and she went up a six foot electric fence in a flash and the only thing that stopped her from going over was um, there was a little strand of electricity at the top which she obviously felt and back down again and at that time I thought oh my goodness we've got a, our, our work cut out for us with her but she ended up being the sweetest kindest gentlest le leopard in the world she was almost like a tame cat when you when you went to go and feed them she always used to come up purring we obviously never interacted with them and we never bred with them but she was just such a sweet sweet cat and her brother Sirius was very very shy so that was they were two very special cats to me it must be quite uh, just traumatized and amazed and bewildered I think and also a um, wonderful thing was that we got to do so many exciting things we had the amazing privilege of um, re-shooting the Born Free song and they, um, Brian May and um, Kerry Ellis came down to South Africa with uh, Virginia and we did this whole um, music video basically with, um, with them. It was, had Brian May up on a hill top of his guitar. Um, <laughs> I thought he was going to roll down it at one point but it was just, it was just such a privilege. He, um, we had a little unplugged um, music concert for the team that had been part of it. The one evening in the BOM at River Dean just a small intimate group of 25 people listening to Brian May playing his guitar and Kerry Ellis singing. It was one of the most magical evenings I'd ever experienced and I just felt that I was part of such a wonderful, wonderful thing and we also got to meet Virginia. I think she is one of the most world-class 
people, along with how amazing Adrian is and what he created at Tamari. She was a true, um, a true pioneer in the work she had done and set such good examples for everyone else. Um, I was just so very privileged to have spent time with her um, and she still spearheads that Born Free Foundation and is still such a figurehead in the conservation world. And um, not only have I got to be with her, but I just get to call Adrian my father-in-law, which is also a great, a great honor and privilege. 23 years ago, our charity, the Born Free Foundation, rescued two lions from a cage on the roof of a bar in Tenerife. We took them to a sanctuary we had at that time in Kent, where they stayed for two years, and then the most wonderful thing happened. Richard Hedges from Thomson Fly, the aircraft which had flown the lions from Tenerife to the UK, met Adrian and told him the lion's story. It was like a gift from heaven. Adrian contacted us and offered to give the animals a home at his private reserve, Shamwari, in South Africa. It really was a dream come true. The lions began their new life at the Julie Ward Centre in a special bush enclosure where they lived happily until they died in 2006. And it's where they're buried. Born Free Now has two rescue centres there. The second in the north of the reserve and is named after Jean Bird, a most generous lady who paid for it to be built. Both centres are full. We now have 10 big cats at Jean Bird and seven at Julie Ward. And once the planes start flying again, we have four ex-circus lions waiting to come there. Our centres welcome visitors from all over the world and children from local schools. They learn about their country's incredible wildlife and the need to treasure and protect it, not hunt the animals for trophies or for fun. None of this could have happened without Adrian. I think that Adrian in his lifetime has already left an extraordinary legacy, creating a safe reserve for wild animals which are under ever-increasing threat, inviting Born Free to establish rescue centres where wild animals and victims can happily live, looked after by a team of fantastic people, some who have been with us for many, many years. With his family, he has put so much into the world and taken out as little as possible. I'm sure that everyone who knows him would feel the same. And the animals at Shamwari are the testament to that. I'd just like to thank Abigail and Virginia McKenna for those exceptionally kind words uh, about our involvement with Born Free. And I must say that takes me back a few years because, you know, I've mentioned a lot about Ian Player and how he influenced my life. And I just want to say how much I admired Virginia and Will Travers and all the work that they did at Born Free. And I'm a great believer that when you get endorsements, that makes your brand. So besides what Ian did for me regarding bringing great conservations from all over the world to Shamwari and endorsing our work, Virginia and Born Free did the same thing. I mean, they brought film stars out. We got lines from disgusting places that we rehomed and we made such a difference. But all those wonderful people that came with Born Free on all the translocations that we did made an exceptional difference to what we were doing at Chemoari. So to have those sort of endorsements was amazing. And then I think how we developed it uh, to enable school kids to come and see the importance of wildlife and why it should be in the wild, I think has been encapsulated in the beautiful story told by Abigail and by Virginia.